Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a new discovery and a somewhat unusual discovery in regards to objects we usually refer to as the white dwarfs. And in this case, it's actually something coming from our own galaxy and something that might redefine our understanding of how these objects evolve, how they age, and more importantly, it might also help us understand if we've made some critical mistakes in regards to measuring the age of certain objects in the galaxy. Mostly because the new study has actually determined that certain white dwarfs do not age in the same way. And so even though previously some of these objects have been used to measure the age of various global clusters in the galaxy, this new study you can find in the description below suggests that there is a possibility a lot of mistakes have been made in the past when measuring their ages. So let's actually discuss this in more detail. First of all, quick reminder on what exactly white dwarfs are. So this is what our sun is going to become in roughly around 10 billion years from now. It's going to become the size of planet Earth, but the mass here is going to be at least half the mass of the sun, with the object itself containing a kind of a sea of electrons. It's known as the electron degenerate matter, and in this particular case it prevents the object from collapsing even further, because electrons, just like a lot of other fermions, are not actually allowed to occupy the same space. And so many different stars are going to end up as white dwarfs eventually, and then spend trillions and trillions of years in this form. The form that slowly cools down over time, eventually turning into what's known as a black dwarf. An object that's essentially a crystallized version of a white dwarf that cooled down to the point where it just no longer emits any heat. But if we look at a typical pathway for stellar evolution, We'll actually discover that a lot of different types of stars, especially stars that are very common in the galaxy today, will end up as a white dwarf at some point or another. As a matter of fact, today it's believed that about 98% of all of the stars in the universe are going to become white dwarfs, eventually turning into black dwarfs. But because so many of them have already been discovered in the last few decades, and because so many of them have been analyzed as well, including some of the most advanced mathematical analysis, Generally speaking, the scientists believed for a very long time that we understood their evolution pretty well. Or essentially, it was well understood how the white dwarfs typically dim, eventually turning into black dwarfs, and there was even a very well understood relationship between their age and of course the luminosity they produce, their mass and so on. Or essentially it was believed that by finding a typical white dwarf, measuring its luminosity and discovering its mass, it was possible to very specifically identify its age what sort of a star produced this particular white dwarf, and more importantly, then use this white dwarf to also establish the overall age of the environment where it was found. And so here we can take a look at this very famous global cluster known as Massey A3 or M3. In this cluster there are quite a lot of different white dwarfs. A lot of them seem to have relatively similar features, and if we can sort of measure their age, we can then determine the total age of the global cluster based on the age of these white dwarfs. That's what's been believed for a very long time, and that's how the scientists determine the age of pretty much every single global cluster in the galaxy, or actually any cluster that contains white dwarfs. And so when a white dwarf was discovered as part of a, some sort of a larger system, it would always be used to determine the age of that particular object. Mostly because it was always believed that the white dwarfs were the most accurate representation of a typical age. But in the last few years, several examples were discovered where the white dwarfs were not actually cooling down as they were supposed to. They were showing some unusual features where the white dwarf was much hotter while also producing way more energy than a typical object of its mass and its composition. Some of these white dwarfs were only discovered a few years ago, but it definitely required further observations and further analysis to determine if this was actually something happening to the white dwarfs or if it was some sort of observational error. And so in this particular study, the scientists wanted to investigate this one more time. They decided to take a look at the most famous global clusters we have in the galaxy. The cluster you're about to see right here, known as M3, which is the largest and brightest cluster we have right here, that's made up out of approximately half a million different stars. It's also estimated, or at least was previously estimated, to be about 11.4 billion years old. And it's approximately 32,000 light years away from us. Now this one is actually kind of interesting, because it's one of those clusters that's not really inside the galaxy. It's uh, sort of above the galactic plane. And it also contains a lot of different variable stars that are often used to determine distances and can also be used to determine other properties as well. 
but they decided to compare this cluster and the observations from the cluster to the one known as M13, Massey 13. This one is slightly smaller in terms of the number of the stars, there are maybe about 200,000 or so stars here, and it also contains some really famous bright stars, such as a star known as V11. Also naturally, because this is a global cluster, things are really really compact here. Stars are really close to each other. These stars here are so compactly packed that sometimes they even collide with one another, producing what's known as the blue stragglers. There's actually an older video on the channel somewhere right there that's about this topic. But I guess the most important and the most interesting fact about this cluster is that back in 1974, this was the destination for the famous Arecibo message. The message that was sent to this cluster using the Arecibo observatory and that was really used as a kind of a test of technology, more so than anything else. Nobody really expects us to hear anything back from the cluster because it's several thousand light years away from us. And so in this particular study, the scientists took a very careful look at both of these clusters and decided to analyze the white dwarfs present in them by using the Hubble telescope and specifically using the ultraviolet observations from the telescope itself. With the main goal being finding differences between the white dwarfs, because generally speaking these two clusters are somewhat similar in both age and what's known as metallicity. Their actual elements on the inside seem to be more or less the same. Although interestingly enough, M13 seems to have slightly bluer, slightly hotter and more massive stars, which also means that it has a chance of producing slightly different white dwarfs as well. At least that's what the scientists thought before they started to investigate this in more detail. Their initial assumption was that it's going to be a little bit different, they did not expect it to be significantly different. As a matter of fact, what they've discovered might sort of rewrite our understanding of how white dwarfs age and possibly also require a recalculation of ages of different clusters in the galaxy and a lot of other objects as well. So what exactly did they find? So when comparing these two clusters and analyzing roughly around 700 different white dwarfs present here, they've discovered that for M3 it seems to be more or less what they expected. It has a lot of white dwarfs that are slowly cooling down just as they would in a normal situation, theoretically. But the slightly closer and more interesting M13 had something entirely different going on. Here, surprisingly, there were two different populations of white dwarfs. Approximately 30% of them were the same typical white dwarfs, but 70% of them managed to somehow maintain their hydrogen envelope and were actually still burning hydrogen, like a typical star. Or in other words, they were almost like entirely different objects. There were still white dwarfs on the inside, but on the outside, the envelope was sort of like a typical star burning hydrogen, which also influenced their cooling down process. They were actually staying way hotter than they should be. Something that the scientists determined they could be doing for up to a billion years. Which of course also means that a lot of the age determination when it comes to white dwarfs or even global clusters where those white dwarfs are located would very likely be entirely incorrect because it's basically based on some of the older ideas. It also means that white dwarfs seem to be able to do things that we never really thought were possible. They seem to somehow maintain the hydrogen envelope and still maintain their star-like properties. So basically here, the core of the star itself is still able to somehow maintain the outside shell and still burn hydrogen on the surface like a typical star would. Now this is just a preliminary discovery of course, and this is just the first such discovery, so this is not really 100% confirmed yet. But if this is actually correct, it obviously means we have to recalculate ages of a lot of different objects, and it also means that we sort of have to change our perspective on white dwarfs. It means that a lot of these objects seem to have an ability to heat up again, and to possibly even maintain star-like features for a very long time. And to make sure that this has an actual merit and that there's something going on here, the scientists decided to investigate this further. Currently, they are already investigating several other similar clusters, with the main goal here being looking at more white dwarfs and seeing if something similar is going on there as well. And if this is indeed something going on here, well, there are so many questions. First of all, why only one cluster and not the other one? Second of all, what exactly makes this happen and how does all of this work? And third of all, well, does this have any other effects on the star itself? Although I'm sure there are going to be a lot more questions if this turns out to be an actual reality. But this is obviously not the first time the unusual properties of white dwarfs are discovered. And I'm sure in the next few years, scientists might finally figure out what's going on here and how all this works as well. For now though, 
Just for the sakes of future studies, the scientists should really be careful when it comes to measuring age of certain objects based on the understanding of white dwarf evolution. It definitely looks like the white dwarfs are not as predictable as we thought they were. They do seem to have their own thing going and they are very different depending on the location and things that happen to them. But once we learn more about this, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, I guess it's just another mystery that we're going to wait for someone to solve. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.